So what we're gonna do, like we're gonna run our Jenkins on container. This is what we're gonna do, and uh, and we will be using Docker Community version that can be run on this CentOS operating system. Okay, so this is so that's why like we have chosen this CentOS server. Let's go and choose this. Okay. And uh, most of the time, like if the operating system subscription haven't taken by you, so you have to go and take the subscription uh, for that operating system. So CentOS, CentOS is a is an operating system for which you have to go and take the subscription, right? But that subscription, the the software subscription is free. Okay, you don't have to pay for the software subscription. Only you will be paying for the amount uh, of the time when you use and run this instance. Now I will be keeping all these options default, right? As of now, this is not our concern to talk about this thing, but only the thing is like we are going to run this instance on a shared hardware, right? So this is one thing. Now let's go and click on this add storage. And this is the amount of the storage, which is sufficient as of now for us. But in production environment, definitely you will be using the addition volume where you can go and keep your, you know, the Jenkins data. So now click on add tag. I give a name like any name, so I think Jenkins will be fine. Configure security group. Now I'm going to create a new security group for this. Let's go and give a new security group. Let's say like Jenkins. And uh, the port number 22 is fine as of now. And here I will say like my IP. When you talk about like when you talk about the production environment, so we never give like uh, you know my IP or anywhere. We always go and provide the custom. So custom range can have the VPC range, or uh, so or or a subnet range, or very very specific IP which we wanted to give as a source. But not open, right? No, we never give open. That is very very new, but we never give open port. Now let's go and click on review. And so you can see like uh, the hourly software piece is like 0, $0.0 dollar and uh, on to dot micro. Okay, so this is all what we have given now. Let's go and click on next, right? So we have to go and create a key pair for us. So let me go and keep, create a key pair. Okay. I have to give a name. So Now click on this launch instances. Now the instance will be available in a moment and you can see like subscribing to product. As I said earlier, whenever you go and you know buy any software, so in that case you have to go and take the subscription. So some softwares are there for which you have to go and do the subscription earlier if they have any cost on something like this. So the subscription is done successfully. Now the instance is going to launch. I'll click on this view instances. Okay. So as we have already opened the port number 22 and we have the key pair with us, so we can go and log in from our, uh, So I have to type an I and the name of the key pair. And then you have you have to go and provide the username. So CentOS operating system having a default username, CentOS, and the public IP address. Go and hit enter. If everything goes fine, so it will allow you to log in. So it is taking some time for, for getting it launched. Okay. So let's try after 30 seconds. I think after that we can be we will be able to log in successfully. So still it is in initializing state. Okay, let's try now once again.
So now it is asking to save the so it is asking to save this uh, public key in the known host file. That's right. And so we have logged in successfully to the account, and I'm using Git Pass to log into this uh, virtual machine that is EC2 instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now let's go and you know install this Docker on this machine. Okay. So first of all, we have to go and enable this Docker Docker repository. Okay. So once we will be able to enable this Docker repository, then we can go and down, then we can go install this Docker uh, by using the yum command. So like there are a couple of versions available: the stable version, test, and nightly. So we will be using the stable version most of the time. Okay. So. Now the link should be available here. Okay, so you can see like uh, we have the CentOS platform. So I will go and click on the CentOS platform. Right now, this is the command. These are the commands which we have to go and run. So this is saying like if you have already installed version, uh, the previous older version on your machine, so you can go and remove all the previous older version. Right. So now let's go and run this command in order to. So I will not be uh, using sudo because I will be logging to the root account to the root user so that I can avoid this sudo command again. again. Let's do sudo su so that I can log into this root user and mm -hmm. you know, and then so this is going to install few packages: yum utils, dev manage, dev mapper persistent data, and lvm2. <laughs> So it will go and install all these packages with the all dependencies. So you can see like uh, the packages has been installed with all the dependencies. Okay, so these are the packages. Now the dependencies for these packages was just and like few packages which have been updated. So these act this activity has been performed. Now we have to go and add this uh, repository. So yum config manager is a command which allow you to which allow you to you know enable any repository. So if we go and give the path, so it will also add the repository and enable it. So the repository has been added now. And if I will go and you know show you by using yum repo list, so it will show you that the repo has been added, right? So this repository has been added, and it says like it has 43 packages. Okay. okay. So this is done. Now what we can do, like uh, we can go and uh, Run this Docker, you know. So yum install Docker, and then we can go and give hyphen y option so that it will not prompt us to install. You can see like this Docker installation has been started now, and uh, so these are the things. These are the packages which is which is going to be installed, and these are the dependent dependent packages which is required to run this thing. This has been installed. Now I will go and run this Docker CE and CLI. Okay, so all these packages I will install by using the Okay, so it is like giving the content. That's fine. So let's go and clear this screen and let's find out whether the Docker has been installed or not. So. The Docker has been installed. Let me go and start the service with some CTL. And first of all, I will go and check the status. So this is stop, and now I will go and start this. So this is this has been started, right? So now what? How we can go and verify? We can go and verify by, by using this Docker run hello world. So this is. This is the image. This is the name of the image. Hello world. What it will do? Like it will go and download this hello world image and run this image, right? So run the container by using this image. So this is what it is going to do. And if the container is going to run successfully, that means like you know our Docker has been configured successfully on this machine. I will go and run this thing. 
So you can see like the image has been downloaded and now it has also created the container out of this image and it is showing us the output, right? So this is what it is doing. So that means like Docker is running successfully on our machine. Now, one thing I would also do that is, you know, sometimes this SA Linux create a lot of problems, especially like whenever we wanted to share our volume between the host machine and the container. So I will go and uh, disable this SA Linux, okay. disable right i will go and save this thing okay and i will also set this thing like set in force zero fine now as a as this set, so it will like uh, security enhance you know security enhancement packages will be uh, disabled as of right i will go and check get in force so it is showing me permission right Earlier it was like enforcing, that means like that uh, that was enabled. So we don't require it because it creates some problems uh, for the permissions. Whenever we go and share our host volume uh, with the container, so in that case it creates a lot of problems. Okay, so that's why like we have disabled it as of now. Yeah, so as we said earlier that we are going to run a container on this uh, on this instance, right? So the container is running, uh, the Docker is running, and now we have to go and run this Jenkins container on top of it. So let's go and you know, read the official document provided by uh, this Docker, so Jenkins Docker. And instead of this, I can simply, it will be good if I will go and show you from the thing, the Docker, and then you have this website, docker.com, right? Now you have to go and search for Docker Hub. So we have this Docker Hub. It's a repository where we go and you know download the images and then we go and configure those images accordingly. So we can also go and create the private images or private repository for us. Okay. So let's go to this Docker Hub and here uh, the all public repository, all public images will be available by using which we can go and create. by which we can go and create uh, the containers on our machine. So as we said, like we are going to run Jenkins uh, on this Docker. So we can go and search for Jenkins images and we have to go and download the Jenkins image from this repository. So here you will also uh, find the official images for you, right? So if you go and you know, just click on this official images, now you can see like this is official image which is available. If you go and you know click on this verify publisher, so like some of the people have created different uh, Jenkins customized Jenkins images and then uploaded and make them public. So that is also visible over here, right? So we don't go and download any of the images, but most of the time we go and you know play around this official images in the real production environment because we have to think for this vulnerability, right? So if we go and use any image, so in that case it may happen that the image have the unofficial images have the vulnerabilities. So we just avoid all unofficial images in real production environment. But if you are really sure that this image is going to work with you, so you can go and choose any of the image and then you can go and run the containers out of those images. So let's go and you know click on this Jenkins. So it will show you all the processes. Okay. So first of all, like it is showing you that if you wanted to download this image on your machine. So in that case, you can go and run this command docker full Jenkins, right? So like quick, quick references is also available. So you can go and follow all the links. Now it is also giving an instruction that how to use this image. So we have this docker run hyphen P 8080, okay? And like this is 50,000. So 8080 port number is required to, uh, to access this, you know, to access this, a Jenkins, uh, which is which is going to run on the container, and this is like port number, which is which is fifty thousand fifty thousand. So this port number fifty thousand is going to run on your host machine, and this fifty thousand is going to run on a container, right? So this port, these ports are required so that your slaves, your slaves can actually go and 
communicate with Jenkins master. So this that's why this code is required, 50,000. Okay. And uh, we have like few additional things too. And if you want to do if so whenever you call, whenever you go and configure this, you know, Jenkins, so you're always having a workspace, right? So all the Jenkins data leave in there. So if you talk about the workspace, so all the Jenkins data will be will be there. So including plugins and configurations, you will probably want to make that uh, persistent volume. Now one thing about Jenkins, uh, one thing about the container basically. So whenever you go and run the container, you know, so uh, that's fine. Like container will be keep running and your application will be running. As soon as you go and you know remove your container uh, from there, so data available in that container will be removed. So data is not persistent in container. So what we can actually go and do, that we can go and map a volume, which is available on our machine, you know, which is available on our machine, that we can go and map that volume with the Jenkins, uh, with the Jenkins, uh, this workspace. So in that way, all the configurations and every files of this Jenkins will be available in our host machine, that is our EC2 instance, okay, this one. Here it is going to be available. So that is like uh, one good thing we have uh, for this Docker container. So we we are going to use like this process. So first of all, we will not be running this command uh, immediately. First of all, we will go and download this image. So let's go and do the same thing. So this machine has been timed out. Let me go and log in once again on this machine. Okay. So first of all, we will go and download the image. So as of course, I will show you. So none of the image is available on this local repository. The Docker images. Mm, let me go and check whether this Docker is running or not. So first of all, I will go and download this Docker and pull. Pull is a command which allows you to download and then Jenkins. Okay. So now you can see like it is downloading the images for us. And once the download, once the image download is will be get downloaded, so uh, then it will show that image in the local repository of the system. So if I will go and run this command, Docker images. So now you can see, like two images are available on the look on this local repository. So the first one is Hello World, which we have downloaded previously. The second one is Jenkins. Okay. So now we can go and run our command. So this is the command which we are going to run, Docker run hyphen p. And uh, so let's go and you know prepare this volume. So as of now. What I will do, like I will go and create a Jenkins folder, a Jenkins directory on my machine. So Jenkins, yeah. And this is the directory where we are going to save all the configuration of the Jenkins, fine. So this is what we are going to do. Now we can go and simply copy this command and paste this command here. So I will go and explain you all the things one by one. So just define this Jenkins. So just this Jenkins folder is available in the in the current directory. So that is what I have defined. Okay. You can go and define the complete path also. So if you want to define the complete path, you can go and define that thing. So it is available in slash. So slash root slash Jenkins. Okay. Let me go and define this thing. Now. <clears throat> Now we are going to map this folder. Now we are going to map this folder with the Jenkins form. Okay. And the image which we are going to use is Jenkins, right? So we are going to use this Jenkins image which is showing here, up here, right? Now what we will do, like we will map the port number. The port number 
on this instance that is 8080 then we are going to map out that port number on the container that is again 8080 you can go and map the different port number with different port number that is not necessary at all that you go and map the port number with the same thing but as of now let's do only this thing right now again we are mapping another port number that is 50000 running on the host your ec2 instance and then we are mapping this thing on the container also and this is hyphen v that is like volume okay so now go and run this thing okay so it says permission denied okay so it says that cannot write to this slash where slash phone copy reference around volume persistent okay let's see this thing slash root and Jenkins. Yeah, we are like giving the right thing here. Let me check the permission of this directory. So, okay. So let's go and you know provide the like. So I'm going to provide some permission that is. Uh, Seven 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 as of now. If this is a permission issue, now let's go and run this command once again. Let's see. Okay, so it is started. It is started to write all the data on our, on my machine. So what I can do, like I can go and create a duplicate session, and then I can check like what all files is going to be created over here. So let me go and uh, copy this public IP of this instance. Now I'll go back to this terminal. SSH hyphen I, then Bhava, and then enter is at the rate. This. So we have logged in successfully. Now we have to do sudo su hyphen and then here we have like a folder that is jenkins and now jenkins should be having all the files so you can see like the file of this uh, uh, jenkins is available here all the files which we had all the files are available here right so this is what uh, we have now we wanted to send the request to this container and so if i will go and you know run a command that is docker uh, container ls so it will show me that this is a container which is uh, which is available to us so let me go and increase the font for this one yeah. and if you wanted to have a look to the running container so that will also list you by using this stack of views so you can see like this is like showing you now it is showing you that you wanted to if you wanted to uh, head to this container so you have to go and request uh, from port number 8080 okay so let's do the same thing from here fine so what i'm going to do like i'm going to request to this local host you know, and the port number will be 8080 so if i will do this thing so it will show me the data uh reading from the container okay so this is like showing me that the permission is required to access this page so this is the permission uh, page which we are getting while we go and configure this Jenkins okay so now we wanted to send a request to this container from the internet browser so what we have to do like we can let me go and run the top command here so that it will not okay so now I will open my browser and I will copy the public address the public IP address once again and I will go to any of the page and just and just paste this thing and 8080 so it will not open right it will not open as of now the reason is very very simple that as of now we uh haven't opened this port number 8080 in the security group the security group of the instance mm -hmm. 
So I will go to this instance once again and click on the security group which is attached to this instance. It is showing in the description section. Let's go and click on this. And uh, now you have this inbound rule. And uh, now you can go and you know add a rule. Let's say custom port number 8080. And now I can open this port number to all because I want my application to be get access from the internet, right? So I can go and like open to all and uh, then kills. Go and click on save. Now I can go back to this uh, third tab and I can go and refresh this thing. So now you can see like the container is up and running and it says that the password is available here in class where slash Jenkins home and then secret and then issue admin password. So if I will go to my terminal once again, so it will show me the password here also. So you can see like first, uh, whenever we configure this Jenkins for the first time, so it shows the password like this. Okay, so if you like miss this screen, so you can also go and read the password from, uh, from this file, which is showing up here. So let's go to this terminal once again and uh, browser and let's go and give the password. Now it will go and ask you to configure each and everything for you. So this is the setup wizard which we have. My installs are listed plugin and if you wanted to have all the customized plugin to install, so you can go and like, you know, choose this option. And from here you can go and choose the options like what all things you want to install so jenkins is all about like installing the you know uh, plugins so i don't need this gradle and and okay so seems to be fine so this is this is the way like we go and you know configure this Jenkins and uh, and this is the way like we go and run the container on our and then the application on our container. Okay. So as of now, if you have any questions to ask, so you can ask, right? So do you have any questions to ask, Margo? Okay. Cool. So, so, so this is like how we go and run the Jenkins, and this is go. Uh, this is the way, like how we go and run the applications on the container, you know. And tomorrow, what we're gonna do, like we uh, are going to create some jobs, and you know, if we have, if we will be having enough time, then we will be also performing. Uh, that how we can go and create the pipeline, you know. So that is what we're gonna do. So this is running on your instance. So uh, you can go and practice this stuff, you know. Uh, so only the thing is like you can go and list the container from uh, from the terminal by using this. I will go and share this key pair also with you. So you can go and you know list the container like this, and then you will be having a container ID. If it is not going to list over here, so you can go and list. By using this ps hyphen a, and uh, then you will be having a container ID. So you can use the container ID, and then you can reduce the command docker start and this container ID like this. So in that way, you can start the container once again. Okay. Okay. So, so we created only one container. So uh, how we can create master and slave? Yes, definitely like uh, master and slaves can also be created. So you can go and run the another container and uh, then you can like, you know, add that container into this master. Okay, but right now we just created only one container. Only. So, uh, I mean like, uh, if I want to put this like in a real uh, production environment, like uh, where our uh, production code will be for that, if, suppose if you're uh, launching a website, so it will be in our host system, right? Yeah, it will be in the host machine only. Okay, then how can we uh, connect that to the Jenkins? So Jenkins is a, like Jenkins is a CI and CD tool, right? 
so jenkin is a ca in cd2 so what you will be doing like you will be deploying the applications by using jenkin you will not be running you know you will not be keeping the code on jenkin now okay. you may want to ask a question that if you wanted to deploy uh, the code uh, you know you wanted to deploy an application which required the code right so definitely uh-huh. like we will not be keeping that code uh, on on jenkins so how do we like how this jenkins know that where that code is available so that jenkins can go and fetch yeah, the code yeah, and then run the application so in that case we generally go and keep our code on you know on this github repository so git repository is 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 the place where we go and keep our code and during the deployment time you know we go and download that code from there and then we go and perform our activity like whatever the thing has been defined in your pipe pipeline so in most of the cases in like in real production environment so this is one practice which we do but there is also one efficient practice which we go and follow that is like you know we go and integrate this jenkins with our git repositories okay so as soon as and we also define that if somebody is making any changes into the master branch so that master branch will you know that change will go and you know run the build in jenkins okay so so if somebody is going to if any of the developer is going to make any change in the master branch in that case you know that is going to trigger a build on this jenkins so that is what the practice which we go and follow and as soon as the build is running so that changes will be get deployed and finally that those changes will be get reflected so prior to make any changes into the master branch of any repository and the developers go and verify like few times that he has all the codes is working you know perfectly in his branch so that is what developers do and even like as a sysops people as a devops people we will be you know creating and integrating all this stuff like we will be keeping a lot of code over there because nowadays it's all about the infrastructure as a code so we will be keeping our code also in the github repository and then integrating those code with the those repositories with the jenkins okay so if we going to make any changes and we want to do not any build so then we will be downloading those uh, those a code from this repository you know and then we will be running and that pipeline so that is how we go and work in the real production environment so that is what we are going to demonstrate in a few coming classes yeah okay yeah i got it maybe after after pipelines and everything we can see definitely definitely